Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another edition of On the Mic with Mike. I'm your host, Mike Larkin, and joining me today is adult star, cam model, and just an overall beautiful and exemplary woman, the one, the only, Miss Stephanie Stalls. How are you? Hey, I'm good. Thank you. How about yourself? I am good. First and foremost, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. I've seen your work for many years. I got to say, first and foremost, quality content as always. And it's a pleasure to have you on the show and give you a platform to tell your story. Um, When it comes to the adult entertainment industry, there comes so much beauty as far as internal and external beauty. So many great photos, so many great imageries and excellent content in the overall front. So let's start off with how what made you kind of gravitate towards the adult entertainment industry and how did really the porn industry kind of come into your lap? I started dancing in 1994, and then in 2005, I became a feature entertainer, and then in 2009, that's when I became a porn star, and where my name comes from is Derek Stalls, which is my uh, ex-fiance from 10 years, and of course, we're not together anymore, but yeah, that's where um, it all started, and then I went in and got into JIT magazine uh, in 2000, well, actually 2005, as well so that's where that comes from (laughs) so when i was going to do a porn for the first time um i wasn't too sure if i wanted to do that because i was with um derek stalls which where my name comes from um i was with him and um i did i didn't want him to know that i was if i was going to be in one or not and i so i'm just i was just like you know, c- contemplating where I, whether I was going to be in one or not because they wanted me to be the feature film, uh, feature of the film. And so I decided that I was going to do it and hopefully that he wouldn't find out. <laughs> so, you know, I did it and um, I was like, you know, all ecstatic about it and just, you know, had just had real good vibes about it. But uh, I always had it, in a, you know, in the back of my mind, I was like, you know, I hope he doesn't find out. Well, one day he found out. And the, how he found out was because his uncle had saw or seen me on uh, a porn, the porn that I had did the, for the feature film. And he told his mother that <laughs> that he that she saw me on on uh, a porn. Which she didn't see me, but he did, you know, but he told her, his her his uncle told her. So uh, he calls me up and he's like, um, so you got something to tell me? And I'm like, uh, no, what What are you talking about? <laughs> and uh, he, he was like, uh, you've been in a porn. And I'm like, uh, no, I haven't. <laughs> and that's exactly how I, I said it to you. No, I haven't. And uh, he's like, yes, you have. Why don't you just tell me the truth? He goes, he goes, it'd be better if you just told me the truth. And then, you know, uh, I said, well, he said, he said, it, everything will be OK if you just tell me the truth. And I was just like, just like my heart was pounding so bad. Like it was just boom, 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 boom you know. And I, I, I said, OK, I just I said, thought in my mind, I'm like, I'm going to tell him. So I went, I, I told him. And, and of course, you know how you're always like. Are you are you okay with it? Like, is, does it really bother you? Are you are we gonna we gonna be okay? You know, and um, <laughs> and we weren't okay. You know, for a month, um, we were good, and then come to find out, he went and st- uh, started seeing somebody behind my back. So we ended up ending things uh, over it. But you know, I will tell you this: it's the best thing I ever did, and I'm happy about it because look where I'm at today. You know what I'm saying? I have done so much. Uh, since I hadn't been with him, and if I, I think that if I hadn't been with him, that things wouldn't have gone as good as they have for me. And so I am so grateful that they have, and ecstatic about my life because things are going really, really good. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm really happy. <laughs> I think that's the best part of it. When you look at the journey and how life really takes you, I mean, there's pros and cons really in anything, in any part of life, from the adult entertainment industry, from whatever endeavor that you pursue. I think the fact of the matter is like you really took a bet and a risk on yourself and you really know your worth. And I think at the end of the day, it just shows within your content how you want to put the pieces together, what it is. Because if you look at it, life is like a big chessboard. We're all making that moves to get that ultimate checkmate, if you will. So, I mean, I think you've hit the checkmate as far as content creation and who you are as a performer and who you are as a being and sometimes we made to outweigh the pros and the cons but i think for where you are it is certainly a pro is certainly a positive and where you've gone in your career thus far and how you continue onward 
Yes, yes, that is true. I, I have I had to weigh out the pros, the pros and cons, and I definitely did that. You know, um, I was hurt at first. You know, I was really hurt. You know, when I thought, oh my god, I'm going to die. You know, and I, I can't live without him at all. But but yeah, you can because time heals all wounds. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I I've definitely I stepped up my you know stepped it up, and um, I've done a lot of a lot of other things too. Like I was on the Jerry Springer show. Um, I did a movie called a mainstream movie called Goodbye Wendell. I was Vicky Carter. And so I've done a lot of other things and I'm really, really happy about it. And, you know, the money has not been, you know, bad either. The money's been really good too. I've been doing really, really good. And I just uh, did two shoots uh, recently too. So uh, that was awesome. <laughs> Let's get into those shoots here because Bella Lexi is a beautiful girl on girl. I mean, when you look at her, like you mentioned, like another great porn star, another great adult entertainment lieutenant officer. I mean, look at different avenues. There's so many people that get into the adult entertainment industry. They may have done teaching. They may have done law. They may have done overall, you know, even a cop. It's it's so interesting, so much very interesting to me as just to see the many different lifespans and life really art forms that they really take you. So let's talk about the shoots as well. And but we'll get to Jerry Springer in a second here. But God dang it, man, the fact that you have those shoots, talk about those shoots about Lexi. Okay, uh, so we we did. I well, I went on a cruise and with Alex King and Bella Lexi, and um, I had a good time. Um, the only thing is, is just I went to I got my test done before. Of course, we all did. We all went and got our test done, and I got my test done at a different uh, center because care center because I went to a, a lab tech any lab test now, which is where you usually go. Well, I had to go uh, to another place. To get mine done because they their tests were expired so here i was i had went drove two hours to go there and then had to drive back home and then drive the next day to go and test again and the only thing is is they don't they test for utis now you know and i didn't have a uti but they you have to test for it so everybody wants you to test for it now because they almost shut the uh the adult industry down because of that so uh, I did not know this until at the time, but when we was already on the cruise, you know, I found out that they didn't test me for that, which they were, were supposed to. But at, but uh, talent testing did not tell these this family care place that, that I was supposed to get tested for that. So uh, we were not able to do go as far as we wanted to go. Um, so we did like um, just, you know, masturbating with each other and kissing and, of course, looking on tits. And but any other, you know, but looking on the clit, <laughs> we didn't do none of that, or you know, looking the, we didn't do that. Any looking anywhere else, we did not do that because <laughs> we we were we you know we just could of safety precautions, you know what I mean. So we wanted to keep it safe, and we did. But you know, I'm looking forward to uh, another uh, shoot with her, hopefully, and because uh, I'd like to make it because I want to go all out when I'm doing something. I want to go all out with it, you know, because I'm a freak. I'm a freak. <laughs> so, yeah, I think, I think yeah. it would be so much fun. And and it just, you know, I want to go out with a bang. I want to do it, do it up right, you know. So hopefully we'll be able to do that. <laughs> And pun intended, and I like how you also put the fact of the matter is they always say when it comes to your different differences from like preferences and your overall uniqueness as a being, especially what you like within the adult entertainment industry. I mean, the common phrase is let your freak flag fly, so to speak. And I think as far as and I've, and I've said this about you, what I love about your work and just your overall decorum and professionalism is Stephanie Stalls. I look at it from a stance, too, as well. You exude and accentuate the voluptuosity factor, right? It shows on screen. It's that gravitational pull with your overall character and being right so when you see a woman like yourself and of your caliber whether it be an anal scene or what have you you can tell you're in the moment you're in the passion you're in the love you're equating the overall art form that is the said scene of sex appeal real deal sex appeal if you will so that goes a long way within your content and what the consumer can really take in from viewing the product oh i i don't have no problem uh, you know uh letting that show or let yeah. that show through you know what i mean i have a great personality and just a you know uh charisma and and, and just a light you know you know we have a glow we all yep. have a glow but yep. i think mine's a little brighter <laughs> sometimes <laughs> you know what i mean so uh i definitely uh i i, I really like that about myself you know because you, you gotta love yourself before you love anybody else you know what i'm saying so i i think that i bring that to the table you know i, I bring my 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 light and my my, like a shining star to the table and and i think people feed off of that you know i think people like i and i know that 
I don't have a, a lot of girlfriends and I have a couple, but you know, they say that, you know, if you have, if you can count at least five, then you're doing good. Well, I have more guy friends. I, I, that's just how it is. I think, I think other women can relate to me that, you know, you have more guy friends, but you know, I think it's I think it's great that because I can talk to guys and, and ask them what they what they like what what they what they like about me. So and they tell me it's it just it's um well the southern charm of course um my personality just the way I am I'm real I like to keep things real like I would rather uh, tell you the truth than lie to you I'm not going to do that well, I'm not going to tell you a, a lie what 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 that makes it things worse you know what I'm saying so just keeping it real and just doing what you do what I do you know and um, keep my smile on my face and respecting of course because that's the number one thing respect. It's the respect, the quorum, and sensuality, and the overall elegance that goes with it. And what I also like about you, too, as well, and I can say this true blue to you, when it comes to honesty being the best poly, sometimes bluntness goes to it as well. And what I can also respect about you as well is, first of all, my mom's side of the family are Carolinian, South Carolina, so I'm aware about the South and the Southern charm and the Southern hospitality, if you will. So I, I love that. I mean, I think it's just it teaches you manners, it teaches you respect and the, the yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. That goes a lot within one's personality. And I think as well, too, like when you talk about lighting up a room, like we'll go back here. We mentioned the Jerry Springer show. When you think yes. of popular, when you think of popular culture and God rest his soul, Jerry Springer and people will say what they will about that show. But from his inception in the early 90s to the later 2010s, if you will, like that show was always so appealing. And I wanted to ask you about your experience, because you look at movies like Ringmaster, which starred Jamie Presley, that came out in the later 90s. that really showcased the vibe of the Jerry Springer show. What a time in popular culture and an influx that show had. Right. Yeah, did you? I'm sorry if you got, had the truck. I couldn't hear you because th there was a diesel that I could, there was like going down the road. <laughs> so, I'll repeat it. Yeah, no, let's, uh, so let's, you want to talk about the Jerry Springer show, right? Yeah, that was okay. Yeah, let's just talk um, yeah. About um, um, I I got to well this uh, this guy that I met and is actually a, a owner of a club, and he's like, I've been on the Jerry Springer show. And I'm like, you have? He's like, yeah. I'm like. I want to be on the Jerry Springer show too. And so he's like, okay, I'll call him up. And he called him up and sure enough, I, I was, they told me to come on down and they, they got my flight and everything. I, I went a uh, nice hotel is in Chicago, which they stopped having in Chicago, for, you know, uh, back years ago. But before that they were in Chicago and I went, I went there and they wanted to uh, have me uh, as of course me. Uh, and have but my two biggest fans come out on the show and duke it out to win a date with me. The kicker was there were two midgets. <laughs> there were two midgets, and they are just adorable. Let me tell you, they're. I'm telling you what, they are. They got fire on their ass, believe me, because they were like running up. That one of them was running up the stairs, going down the pole, and then one one of them hit uh, the other's head on the damn uh, carpet, and you could hear it bang. Uh, so I'm like. Dip, dip. Them up, truck was going to they can brawl, let me tell you something. But they, they were about they were duking it out because they wanted to win. One of them wanted to win a date, a date with me worse more than the other. So that's all I gotta say. Uh, but they were awesome. They were really, really awesome. Um, and actually, instead of me going out and partying with one, I went and partied with everybody because it was awesome. It was really great. And I got and I also got paid too. They pay you, and of course. And people always want to know if if the Jerry Springer show is is scripted. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. Because my because everything that I was supposed to say was scripted. So yeah. Other than you know me being who I am, you know, but the rest of them, I didn't even know them. I didn't even know the to, the two guys. Or to, should I say little people and not midget? Because I don't want to be anybody upset with me. Little so maybe people. Yeah. little people. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to uh, disrespect anybody. So yeah, little people. But they were two great little people. I'm gonna tell you that right now. They were awesome, and I would definitely love to hang out with them again because <laughs> I had a ball. <laughs> Well, I think that's what's great, too, about the show. And, I mean, I come back from the days growing up in the 90s. Like, folks, you all can attest to me this. When Jerry Springer would have the live pay-per-views that were uncensored, and you would incorporate what you saw in spring break and over the summer type of vibes there within the pay-per-views, that show just really encompassed not only pop culture and entertainment, but it really got to show you different sides of many different characters and people, including the midgets, that were fighting for the date of the one and only, the little people of Miss Stephanie Stahls. But you also get to see there as well, too, again, the influx, not only with pop culture, but the influx of just what we get to see today as society with television, and especially with it nowadays and how we view entertainment, how we consume everything. I think it's great just to see the evolution of what we've seen as far as shows go, the entertainment standards, and just where we are today, you know? 
Yes, of course. Yes. Um, I, I, I've done other things too, you know, um, and, and uh, talking about pop culture. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's definitely changed. I think, uh, from what it was before things have changed. Of course, you know, technology has changed too. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cause you know, before we didn't, <laughs> at one time we didn't even have cell phone, you know, we, you know, car phone, that's what they had. But yeah, all this stuff is, is just, it's just, it, it's, it's gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and everything's just changed, changed a whole lot. And, uh, and, and, and that's, and it kind of changed with, you know, the, the shows that you go on that I have been on. Um, and, and also doing a mainstream movie, uh, called Goodbye Window Up too. And, um, where I played Vicki Carter. So that was very, that was very interesting to do, <laughs> for sure. Well, let's talk about that, because when you see any type of movie, and I mean, it's always, it's interesting, like a movie like A Goodbye Window and the Vicky Carter character, I mean, I think looking at that, and we'll put images as well from the show in this podcast here, folks, everybody can check out the lovely St- Stephanie Stalls over here, but God dang it, man, like the acting ability that you have, the presence, it's all about going out there, not just the showmanship, but when you embody a character, and I'll use an example, like when Jim Carrey played Andy Kaufman in Man in the Moon, right? When he's playing the role of Saturday Night Live Andy Kaufman, he embodied the role. Sometimes you embody what you play, but I think you did play that part well, and it's definitely a good movie to check out for everybody who's not seen it. I got to give you kudos on your role. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, I, 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 I'm, I, I don't know. It's just my charisma and how, you know, I, I can, I can, you can, well, you can pretend that's what pretending is. And it's so right. much fun to do that. You know what I mean? I really like doing that. And um, so, I mean, I, I want, that's why I wanted to go further. I wanted to go further than just porn. I wanted to go into the mainstream, which I did. I have, and hopefully all there's more to come in the future. I hope. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, I just do, you know, my, just my vibrant, uh, glowing personality and it just brings it. That's what I bring to the table. And I, I, some of this is like, it kind of feels like it's me in a way when I'm doing, uh, you know, movies, it's, it's me. I, I put, I put myself instead of it, you know, that's not my, that's not my character or whatever, because in a sense you do do that a sense you do put yourself in that character's position. You know what I'm saying? So I does I, I like it. I like doing it. It's fun. <laughs> I think that's what life, if you really look at it in itself, folks, when you look at life, you're being the best representation of your presentation, right? But not only are you doing that, fun goes along with what you're doing, because if you're not having fun, then why are you doing it? And I think with what we do as people, and especially in today's society, I mean, if you look at the evolution of how the adult entertainment industry has changed from the 80s, the 90s, to the 2000s, the 2010s, and now the 2020s that we are in right now, like, Many vids and OnlyFans are really sweeping up. They took over during the COVID time period. Like, it's great just to see more technologically standpoint, another outlet and for content creation, but a community for a lot of the adult entertainment fans. I, I have uh, mentioned in that. I have uh, OnlyFans, my uh, mini vids, uh, clips for sale. I have all those. But it just takes time to do all that stuff, you know, and it's just a little me, you know, and I don't have, you know, uh, PR right now. So it's kind of hard, you know, doing just trying to trying to take care of all this stuff. Because, as you know, I have kids that live with me. My grown ass kids live with me. So <laughs> I to take care of their ass. And, and I'm like, it's time for y'all to fly the coop. You know what I'm saying? Get spread your wings and fly. Bye bye. You know, and so I still got them. So I'm still helping to take care of them, too, you know. I'm like, so I, I'm trying to do it all. It is kind of hard to do, you know, try to do it, but I do the best I can, you know, because I, it, it takes a lot of, you know, a lot of your energy to put it into all those, you know, sites that I've got, you know what I mean? And so I know that other people have help. So I'm like, help, help me <laughs> so I can get it done, you know, and make things better. And um, it, it, I'll, maybe, maybe in time it, it will get better, I hope. But um, until then, I'm just going to I'm just going to go with the pace I'm going right now. <laughs> but I, I do. It, have those, yeah, I do. I do have, you know, those those uh, apps and everything and um, those sites for them to for guys to come to see me. <laughs> I will so. say this. If you've not checked out the many vid side of things of Miss Stephanie Stalls, and I will say this, I've seen some of the solo content that have been on there. My goodness, ma'am, doing the damn thing is only you can do. It's definitely worth the check out. And it's definitely worth the watch because, again, it's more great content from the lovely Miss Stephanie Stalls. Definitely give her a follow and check her out on that content. <laughs> Thank um, you. Uh, I'm sorry, my dog's whining in here. <laughs> yeah, don't even complain. I just had to let cats out before this. So I mean, it's, it's the beauty of animal folks. You know what I'm saying? They I want you to love them when you're done. 
whiner. She she's a whiner. Well, she's a whiner. Believe me. I when she was a puppy, I got her. I when I got her, she's looking right at me. And she's just like, mm -hmm. I'm like, come on now. Now now she's gonna come over here. Oh my god. <laughs> here she is. You see her? I, <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> she's right there. <laughs> Look at her, she's going behind you now. She's a pit bull. <laughs> oh my goodness. And what is this pit bull's name? Her name is Kizzy. I named her off from, from Roots. Do you know uh, Roots? Yep, Coops I'm King aware King. of Roots. Yep. King Jay's daughter. Yes. I love that movie. It's so good. See, she's trying to get my lap, but she whines more than any dog I know. Like, I, I, I've never, I've never heard a dog whine like that. You know, I know dogs whine sometimes, but this one right here whines all the time. I'll be sitting on my bed and she'll be looking at me like this with this look, you know, and it's a different look as I can tell. And um, she'll be, she'll be looking at me and she will start whining and she'll get, it'll get louder and louder and louder. And I'm like, get on the bed. I don't know what you want me to do. Like, get on the bed. And so she gets on the bed and, uh, but, she, but it, it's just, it's crazy. It's, it's totally different from what I've ever uh, been through with a dog. <laughs> you know what I mean? She acts like a, a, a human being, actually, is what she acts like. <laughs> but she's I something have, else. I, tell you. <laughs> no, I have the same thing with my cats, too. So, I mean, for those who are animal lovers and get it, y'all know what we're talking about. From the howling yeah. and the love. Yep. <laughs> I just have snakes, too. Okay, wait. All right, hold on here. So, dogs. <laughs> you want to know about that? I used to dance with my snake as well. Oh, okay. Fair enough. I like it. It's very much like Britney Spears at the VMAs. I'm a slave for you. Get yeah, the I dance with the snake. Get very exotic. Yep. I was doing that way before, way before her. <laughs> <laughs> I actually did one of my feature shows was uh, uh, my Indian show, which I'm Indian anyway. So, me wearing my, you know, wearing the headdress and the outfit, which was white and teal color and it had beads on it. it had beads jewels and rhinestones all that all over it and um so i had so a friend of mine uh who lived about me uh make me a tp he made me a tp and he uh and then i i had my snake i also have a coyote i i don't have a real coyote a stuff coyote um it's in my living room well i take that i would take that with me when i would go and feature and I have, so I have my teepee on stage. I'd have a, my coyote on stage and I come out with my Indian costume on and uh, I'd be dancing to, you know, the different Indian songs. Sometimes it, they'd be instrumental that were, they wouldn't have any words to it, which was awesome. I liked how that kind of flowed. And then I'd, I'd bring out my snake. My snake would be, you know, be on stage and then I'd grab them up. And of course, everybody'd be like, because oh, I didn't know what it was in, you know, they didn't know I had it. You know what I mean? And I started dancing with them. I, Put this, you know, the snake's head in my mouth. Put down there my my coochie. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> and uh, and yeah, and, and um, he his name was Truxton, and he never actually I had two. I had Truxton one, and Truxton two, and um, they never bit me or you know did, or did anything you know to hurt me. And, and I and I would you know I would my mom taught me how to do how to uh play, you know dance with my snake. She danced too with the snake when she was younger when she was a dancer, and she didn't go as far as I did, but. She she danced at a club and they wore sequins and all that. But she taught me how to uh, how to dance with my snake and I would go like this, like that with them. And then you know I'd put them like this and let them sliver all over me and put them on my arms. You know, just do whatever I thought was I needed to do at the time. You know, and it was great. I loved it. I always had a great time with them, and they were used to it. They were used to the music and you know the 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 uh, the bass and everything. So yeah, I, I loved it. I loved it. It was fun. That was one of my best shows I ever had. So you hear crying? I do. <laughs> messing up my interview. <laughs> You're messing up my interview. Shut up. <laughs> no, I, totally fine. Totally fine. What what I love about it too is as well, also, folks, you get the exotic feel with the snakes and the dancing. And what goes with it, it's a very nice flow. And I mean, you're kind of like a Jill of all trades. I mean, from adult star, from acting, from modeling, from doing what you do as far as the you know dancing goes. But also, if you look at it like, Miss Nude, United States Showgirl of the Year, United States Showgirl, Miss Nude International. Like, you have those vibes and those accoutrements that really goes to show what you're about within your career. Like, that's another just stepping stone of just how important that is. But also, number two, it really does encompass a lot that goes into your character. I got to give you kudos on those fronts because those are great achievements. Oh, thank you. Um, well, you're talking about Miss Nude United States, or was it Miss Nude International or Miss yes, Nude United States? Yes. yes um, Showgirl of the Year. I won Entertainer of the Year. Oh, I also was Miss Big Bus World uh, twice, two years in a row. 
Um, I was also Miss Exotic Indiana. So I, I want oh, and also uh, Miss Nude International Entertainer of the Year. Uh, so I've done I've done many many pageants and won many titles. I, that's not all that I you know I many the titles that I won, but that's just a few. <laughs> just a few. I, I love that because when you look at the pageant side of things, I think it's just the overall. It's the glitz and the glamour, but it also has exudes like we talked about elegance. There's something about just the poise and grace, not just the sensuality side of things, but if you look at the poise and grace and the discipline that goes into it, it really takes a lot that goes into your overall performance, and that is definitely respected and much kudos because there's a lot that goes into that. Oh, definitely. Um, I did fire. Um, I believe fire on my on my shows. Um, you know, um, and I made them myself. I would I would get uh, these dowels. I'd cut a dowel. <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> I would cut a dowel and um, I would wrap gauze. I'm not talking about the sticky gauze. I'm talking about the the old gauze. You know, the the ones that you wrap around and then you had. To, I tie a shoe a uh, a piece of um, thread around it and then that way it would stay on. And it worked, believe me, because I, I've, I've made many dowels. <laughs> they look like gigantic t- uh, Q-tips. <laughs> and uh, so I would just soak them in, um, you know, some uh, alcohol and let them soak in a, like a vase, a clear vase. And uh, then I take them out, you know, kind of dab them a little bit and light them up. And then I would put the alcohol in my mouth and I'd blow it. And, I'd, and the thing about it is I never, ever burned myself, ever, because I knew how to blow it right because – I know that there has been other women out there, uh, other features that have burnt themselves. I've had they've had it, you know, uh, the alcohol go down their chin, uh, their chin, and and burn them real bad. And thank God I've never had that happen. But there's a way you got to blow this stuff. You know what I'm saying? You have to blow it right, and it's like like that. You go weak in it and out. That's how you do it. In and out. <laughs> and I don't it. In and out. In and out. <laughs> So, and I love how you also talk about the precaution, too, because it reminds me of, say, like you're going to a bar and a lot of them do like fire shots, too. It's like there's a there's a skill and there's a way to do it so you don't light yourself on fire. There's so many different ways to do it. And I mean, like if you look at and I'll say this, if you look at a professional wrestling match, like or if you do like a hardcore match and some of them have used fireballs like Jerry Lawler, the mouth of the south in Memphis, Tennessee. One of his tricks was he used to throw a fireball at you, but there's a trick to it so you don't get burned. You know what I'm saying? With flash paper and everything that goes into it. It's all about how you dedicate to the performance and dedicate to the craft that you're also safe at the same time. So there's a process that's really adhered to within the overall works of it. Oh, so you're talking about fireballs. So like what, what kind of fireballs? Like what, so what are you talking about? Sure. So, so in wrestling, like a, one of the things that they use is like kind of like flash paper when they like throw a fireball in one's face. Like for those who have seen it, Jerry Lawler's done it. I think Hulk Hogan did a match with, with the Ultimate Warrior back in 98, but Hulk Hogan did it wrong. So he like burnt his eyebrows like right here off. It was pretty bad. But there's so many things that really go into it, like with anything with fire. I've always said like it depends on the safety and the precaution of it and how you just execute the maneuver or really how you execute like your performance there. So you don't burn yourself. There's always safety and precaution. And then there's the two S's in any entertainment. You have to be safe and you have to do it spectacular. So safe and spectacular goes into it, do it safely, but in spectacular fashion. So that's really the things to really adhere to with any other form. Well, I will tell you this. Um, I, I was like, I almost caught some curtains on fire one time. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, one, of pageants, one of the pageants I did, and it was, but I believe me, I'm sitting there and I, I put the fire on my legs. I put it in my, uh, in my crotch, right? Yeah. Well, and I, I'm all about, I cut on my back and my butt, you know, and I'm, I put my legs together trying to get the fire to go out, right? Well, it wouldn't go out. I'm sitting there clapping my legs, clapping my legs, trying to get it out. And um, and, and I had the wands in my hand, so I could not put my hands down because I had the wands in my hand. So I'm sitting there going, doing that you know trying to get the fire out and it finally went out but i i i, I forgot that i that it did burn me a little bit but that's a tiny bit you know what i mean so i don't really think that counts but i did have a hard time getting it out and there was curtains big tall curtains behind me because i was close to the back and the 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 guys that were there the security they they would started running up because they was worried that i would go get the fire out and they would thought i was gonna burn the, you know the curtains because i had the wands in my hand i'm like trying to get it out but i i did not do it <laughs> i did not burn the curtains thank god and because they were there you know for a close close call and so i you know it was we were all safe thank goodness but yeah that was a close one i will say that <laughs> 
I, I think what's great about that too, and as as we've really touched upon in today's forum, folks, when you look at a woman like Stephanie Stalls, an extraordinaire when you go into what you do, you do what you do, you love what you do, and you put the effort in the forefront and what you do. And I got to say this with the utmost sincerity and respect, you are an absolute gem with what you do. And I'm going to put this out here right now. The overture is here, Miss Stephanie Stalls, for round two. I'd love to have you back on the show and just continue and just do what you do and, and continue to exist and inspire. I really enjoyed today's conversation. Oh, thank you very much. I enjoyed it too. It was fun. <laughs> Welcome. And that's what it's about. I don't about stuff. stuff like that. No, bother me a bit. <laughs> ah, ah. Thank you too. And happy birthday again, by the way. Thank you. My love. I truly appreciate that. And one final question I do have to ask you before we promote the social medias. You are an extraordinaire and you really are a big influencer within your work and your overall involvement as a person and your overall being. What advice would you give to people that really want to get into the adult entertainment industry or some people that really want to enhance and perform and say it's films? What advice would you give them? Whoever wants to get into the adult entertainment industry, what's like key advice that you would give to them? I would say just go for it. If this is what you really want to do, you know, think about it hard, you know, because once you do, um, it can affect you, um, you know, your family and, and your friends and your boyfriend and your husbands. And, you know, make sure that you know what you're doing when you do go into this uh, type of industry, because you never you can never go back. So you better be ready for it. You better be ready for what's to come. And if, the, if this is what you want, then go for it, you know. Because I mean, it's it still has a happy ending, a good a good conclusion, you know, to the story. So you you know, I I it it was good for me. I I'm I'm happy that I did it because um, I have wouldn't have gone as far as I have today if I hadn't have you know, and and I don't know what I would have want, wanted to do before. I, I'm also a cosmetologist as well. I I don't think knew I don't know if you knew that or not, but yeah, I'm a cosmetologist, and okay. so I've got that. And so when this stops. Then I can go into that if I, you know, if I want to, or vice versa, it doesn't matter. Because um, I was going to retire, uh, but I decided not to. I think I've done that twice. <laughs> so well, yeah, that's, that's my that's advice awesome. to yeah. anyone that wants to get into it. No, I appreciate that. And well said and well eloquently spoken there. Adhere to those words, folks, and keep being the best representation of your presentation. Because one of the quotes that I love, I always say this in the show, life is an art form and we're all applying our crafts. So let's continue to apply our crafts in amazing fashion. And you over here, cosmetologist, I will, we'll bring this up here very quickly here. But I love the fact that as well, you're getting into the cosmetology world. You're doing your thing on that front, which is also great pay. And it's also a great worth of living for that aspect. Oh, I, I loved it. Well, I love doing hair. I love doing extensions and, and wigs and all that stuff. That's my forte. I love it. <laughs> I'm very good at it. So if anybody wants extensions, I'm your girl. I can do them for you. I can do any kind of extension you want. <laughs> any one of them. Beads, uh, tracks, it doesn't matter. I can sew. I can do all that. So any one of them you want, I can do it. So just let me know. <laughs> Give her a holler for some hair extensions or some braids. Just do it up. Give her a shout out. Definitely do that. Def I'm glad that you brought that up because, again, <laughs> another extension of your amazing character and another extension of social media that we have. Where can yeah. we follow you on Twitter, Instagram? Where? What are some of the forms we could follow you on? Um, OnlyFans. Um, it's Stall Stephanie. Remember that. Stalls at Stall Stephanie, not Stephanie Stalls. Now, that's why I think everybody, you know, gets, uh, can't, well, can't find me. Uh, sometimes is because it's Stall Stephanie. I don't know if I can change that or not. I've been wanting to change it because I wanted to be Stephanie Stalls, but it's not. As of right now, it's not. It hasn't been. It's been Stall Stephanie. So at Stall Stephanie. And that's what that is. Yep. <laughs> Links will be in the description below this interview, folks, here on the YouTube channel. If you want to follow myself, check out SM Show One or MCL92 on the Twitter front, M Larkin MB or Larkin underscore 92 on the Instagram front, StephenMikeShow.com and Mike Larkin92. Subscribe where you can hear interviews of all facets of life and on the mic of Mike, including this one over here, S Squared, Stephanie Stalls, and the place to be. And you, my friend, are a beautiful human being, and I cannot wait to have you on for round two. And as I always send to end each and every one of these shows, folks, beauty, strength, and dominance, the three key elements that make women the work of art that they are. And Stephanie Stahl, I include you in those sentiments. Thank you so much for your time tonight. Thank you so much. I had a great time. Same. Thank you, guys. See you <laughs> next time. Bye. <laughs>